So now our last thing we need to talk about in this unit is how to calculate the arc length of a polar curve and the surface area of revolution of a polar curve. And so when we're talking about arc length, we're talking about literally how long is the section in red here. So if I were to make this out of rope and I had some sort of flexible tape measure, how many inches or centimeters or wherever we're measuring by would it take to get all the way around? And so if you can remember back to our, our um, definition of um, the uh, finding the arc length, it, it gets its origins from the Pythagorean's theorem. And so hopefully it's no surprise that we see some kind of a Pythagorean uh, form here. And, um, and so you, you know we're dealing with some sort of uh, um, delta x squared plus delta y squared um, square root equaling that hypotenuse as we segment this into little into really short straight segments and so the I've gone through a few derivations one back in chapter 7 and one earlier in this chapter um, for arc length and this derivation gets pretty long but we can do the same type of algebraic manipulation and come up with this uh, relationship here so we're squaring the function and then we square its derivative um, and that is uh, how we calculate the arc length. So to, to traverse this uh, curve once, we need to go from 0 to 2 pi. So um, the derivative, and, and this is nice because it's, it's the polar derivative, it's not the Cartesian derivative. So we're just taking the derivative of this with respect to theta. And so um, if we, uh, if we uh, do that, our dr d theta then is... Um, Basically, uh, you can distribute the 8, so this is 8 plus 8 cosine theta. So when we take the derivative of this, we just get minus 8 sine theta. And so there's our derivative. And so when we talk about then finding the, uh, the length of that curve, then um, we're looking at uh, integrating... Um, from 0 to 2 pi, this expression. And so uh, if we set this up uh, to get this arc length, we can go from 0 to 2 pi, and then we have the square root of um, the function squared. So that's uh, 8 times 1 plus cosine theta squared plus the derivative squared, negative 8 sine theta quantity squared d theta. Uh, and so it looks like that. And um, that gets a little um, lengthy to, to integrate. And again, it's another f int um, sort of thing. And so I haven't tried this, so I'm kind of doing this unpracticed here, but let's go ahead and stick the function in R1. 8 times 1 plus cosine theta. And let's go ahead and stick the derivative in R2. See if this makes it easier for an f int. Um, minus 8, I think I used the wrong minus sign. Hold on here. Opposite 8 sine theta. Okay, so R1 and R2 are there. Uh, if we do an f int, then we can say that the function is this whole thing. So it's the square root of, and then I can go grab the parametric, or excuse me, the, the polar R1 and square it plus, and then go ahead and grab the other polar in my VARS menu, grab R2, and square it. Okay, so I've got R1 squared, R2 squared, I've got the square root of that, so I've got all of this accounted for. The um, variable of integration is theta, and I'm going to go from 0 to 2 pi. Let's see how that works. Okay, so the arc length is 64 
um, 64 units. Arc length is length, so it's just units to the first power. Um, so that's a way to make your, your F into look a lot nicer and not have to get so uh, complicated uh, on your calculator. When we talk about revolving a surface area, um, then we're talking again. We're talking about revolving it around different uh, axes, um, either this axis, which uh, remember is called the polar axis, um, or this axis, which is called the line uh, pi over two. And so when we talk about that sort of rotation, um, let's kind of get a sketch here. So we talk about this one going about the line, uh, the polar axis. So we're talking about revolving it around that. Then we're talking about this distance here from here to a point on that curve. And that distance is a y value. And so if that's a y value, then that's an r sine theta radius. And so um, when we talk about rotating around, the, this is the polar axis here. We're talking about that's that's this one here. Um, we're talking about two pi times that radius, which is r sine theta, times the arc length. Um, and and then if we look at, let's say that we have um, something like this, and we want to revolve it around this line which is the pi over 2 axis, um, then we're talking about this distance from the pole up to a point on that curve. And so that is an x value, horizontal distance, which is an r cosine theta. And so that's our radius of, of, uh, of rotation, so that's our uh, our cosine theta times 2 pi, there's our circumference, there's our arc length. And so um, when we're being revolved around pi over 2, uh, we have that sort of relationship. Um, so in this case, we're revolving around the polar axis. So we're going around this axis here. And so we're going to create this, um, it's almost a donut shape. It's called a torus, technically. Um, so T O R I S, I call it a donut or a bagel or something like that. As this thing is coming out towards us and then coming back into the paper and spinning around, being rotated around that way. So um, if we graph this two sine theta, we get um, our circular uh, section that looks like this. And um, if we at theta equals zero, if we're going from zero to pi over two at theta equals zero, uh, radius is theta equals zero, radius equals zero, a theta of pi over two gets us a radius of uh, two. So if we look at this here, um, we're looking at uh, a radius of zero is right here. A radius of two, uh, we're counting by two boxes equals one, so a radius of two would be right here. And so what we're rotating is not the full torus, but half the torus. So we're just spinning that arc length around this axis. So if, we, if you can picture this as taking a bagel and slicing it in a half, um, uh, you know, if, we, if we take a look at this picture where we have the full circle um, and then we're slicing that in half and we're only getting like the top half of the bagel. Um, that's kind of uh, the, the surface area, you know, how much surface area is in the top half of that bagel is basically what we're talking about. So, um, so we're integrating from 0 to pi over 2. And then we've got to set up the... Um, you know, which one we're talking about. So if we kind of just think about this logically, we're talking about picking an incremental area on the top of that bagel that is a distance x away from the pole. And so this x then is going to be our, our cosine theta. So we have this form um, 
of the uh, Oh, excuse me, I've got the wrong axis of revolution. Ooh, good catch there. So we're talking about this incremental point on the bagel, and we're talking about rotating it about this uh, axis of rotation, the, uh, the polar axis. And so that's a, y, um, that's a y height there. That's an r sine theta. And so we're looking at this form of the derivative. So we've got uh, 2 pi... Uh, R sine theta is going to be 2 sine theta times sine theta times the square root of then this function um, 2 sine theta quantity squared uh, plus the derivative which is a, um, what is the derivative of this? Um, the derivative here, uh, d, r d theta, is going to be 2 cosine theta. So the derivative is 2 cosine theta, quantity squared d theta. And so if we look at this then, um, we end up having a trig identity here. So we have 2 pi 0 to pi over 2 of 2 sine squared theta times the square root of, and I can pull out a 4, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta d theta. So this whole thing is just square root of 4, which is 2. So we have 0 pi over 2. Uh, 2 pi times quantity of 0 to pi over 2 of, if this whole thing is just 2, then we have 4 sine squared theta d theta. So that's pretty easy to put into an f int on its own. So I'm going to go ahead and just do an f int uh, 4 um, times the quantity sine theta squared um, the variable of integration is theta and we're going from 0 to pi divided by 2 Oops, it's not pi there we go pi divided by 2 and so uh, we get um, an answer of 0 0.314, uh, 3.14, which ironically is pi, if you think about it. Um, so we have um, 2 pi times pi, basically, um, which is, ends up being 2 pi quantity squared. Um, and then if we think about this, um, 